it ends three games later on a flight home from New England. We just played New England, flying home, I collapse on the plane. On the way to the restroom, I wake up, my teammates are, you know, waking me. They land the plane, my parents take me to the hospital. I end up having a surgery and there are complications and I have a second surgery um, six days later. I'm, I'm now 65 pounds below my playing weight. I have two ostomy bags on my side. In the same hospital where dad is working and his colleagues telling him, you know, Dr. B, we're not sure Rolf's gonna survive the, the night. I was massively infected. I had peritonitis. I, my organs are shutting down. I'm, I'm septic. And I think the Lord steps in and I survive the night. And then I get in amazing medical care. I'm in the ICU for five and a half weeks. And every day is a battle to live. And it was during that time that it was identified that I had an abscess and I needed another surgery. And I, I remember telling the doctor, I, I won't survive a surgery. I won't survive a surgery. And on the way to the operating room, they do one more view of where the abscess is that they're going to have to drain. And they can't find the abscess on the uh, x-ray. And they try and they try and they huddle in the corner and they say, well, we can't find it. I guess we won't do surgery. And again, I think the Lord intervened there. I, I couldn't have survived a surgery. I was at the end. I had nothing left. Mm. And I didn't have the surgery. And uh, eight weeks later, I was released to the care of my parents, looking at life going, all right, well, where do I go now? And why didn't I die? From my perspective, there was nothing in my life that was worth living for. I love sports of all kinds. I'm going, I'll never do that. I'm making my living as a professional athlete. I'm sure I'll never do that. And I was 24 year olds and single, and I, and I like girls, and I'm going, that's off the table too. I mean, why didn't you just kill me now? Hmm. And I guess, you know, sometimes it's, you know, thank, thank God for unanswered prayers. There's a picture of you, and I think it's in everybody's mind. 1979, Louis Kelcher, you, on the field. You've said it before, how emotional that was for you. Is that one of the first times you really felt the impact of the city's feelings toward you? It really was. It was so spontaneous. So the team, I was out of the hospital for two weeks, still trying to figure life. I mean, I could hardly walk. I still had wire sutures holding my abdomen together. Invited me back to watch a game, and they had a, a box for me to watch the game, and some of the players heard I was there, and so they asked if I would come down. And so Rick Smith, our PR director, took me down to the locker room, and I hadn't seen the guys in more than two months. And I remember their eyes, you know, got this big when they saw me, and and I'm sure I must, I mean, I was, you know, 60 pounds less than the last time they saw me. And the next thing I know, <clears throat> Louis is going to Coach Coriel and says, you know, let's make Rolf honorary captain for the day. And sure, that's a good idea. Like, <laughs> let's do that. And, and then Doc Brooks, our equipment manager, is draping this jersey over me. And, and, uh, and I'm being told we have to go out for the coin toss after the national anthem. And I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if I can walk that far. And Louis was, you know, special guy. You know, as big as he was, his heart was bigger. And he said, well, if you can't walk that far, I'll just have to carry you out there. And um, when we were introduced walking to the middle of the field, they announced us. And there was this spontaneous reaction in the stands. You know, 60,000 people started to stand. And I had no idea that many people had been following me. I was in this cocoon of ICU trying to live. And I remember we were playing um, Pittsburgh that day, and me and Joe Green was on the captains. And as he's shaking my hand, he goes, uh, these people must really care for you. And the truth was they cared for our team. They loved our team, and I happened to be the guy that was sick. And I remember walking off the field with Louie and, and thinking, this will be the last time I'm ever going to be on this field. I mean, what brought you back to a game that, first of all, you knew was violent, was going to be very demanding on you physically. And I didn't even know at the time, maybe that your head was even leaning that direction, was it? I never thought about playing football again. Here's how this series of events work. So I was still under contract, which means I could go to the workout facility and start to recover. And I was extraordinarily fortunate. We had a strength coach named Phil Tyne, who took me under his wing and started to nurse me back to health. I mean, it was literally two pound dumbbells to take home in front of a TV. And that process of recovery, with the disease out, the body, the body began to recover, 
and I began to heal. Now that was November. Training camp was the following July. I had no idea what to do. I was asked to be the color commentator for the San Diego Soccers. We had an NASL outdoor team, you might remember. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll get into broadcasting. So I can my... tell you that was a better decision for you to keep playing. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it, it, it turns out to be a great... So I start traveling with the team, doing broadcasting, and they start allowing me to play in their small side games and train with them. And so now I'm starting to run a little more, bump, bump a soccer ball, and in the meantime, continuing to work out with Phil Tyne. And my ostomy bags stay on, and one day he goes, do you think you can kick a football again? I said, I have no idea. So we literally go take some footballs and I start to crush it. And I'm going, maybe I can play. But nobody's ever played with bags on. So I called a meeting with the owner, Gene Klein, and said, um, there's been a lot of support for me. I appreciate it. This community has been unbelievable. They literally saved my life. I have 80 units of blood from San Diegans in me. The prayers and letters and cards, I will tear up if I, whew. If I talk about it long, because of the, the love of this community that was expressed to me. And I remember telling him, I appreciate that, but you need a kicker. Will you just allow me to compete for my job? No special dispensation. And to my amazement, he said, if you can convince the medical staff that you can protect yourself, we'll let you go talk to Coriel. So I go to coach, and he goes, yeah, I throw her off. Yeah, I'd love to have you. you know. <laughs> and so now... I come to training camp and I start to compete for my job.